Healing, something we all need, but most of us do very little about it. Once you heal your emotional wounds, you have pretty much won the battle. And people who have gone through emotional abuse, they can understand how difficult it is to move forward in life. So in this video, I am going to share signs that you are healing from emotional abuse. If you're new here, my name is Sadaf. I'm a certified emotional healing expert and intuitive mentor. And on this channel, I talk all things emotional and spiritual growth. So let's talk about the signs that you are healing from an abuse that you may have suffered over the years that accumulated in your body that now you have started healing. So the number one sign that you are healing from emotional abuse is that you blame less on others of what they have done and you take more personal responsibility for your own change and your own transformation. So you are self-focused. You have taken ownership, power in your hand to change your life. And that's a huge sign that you're healing from any kind of abuse that you have gone through. When we are in pain, we tend to blame, we tend to point fingers at others that they are the reason for our pain and most likely that is true. That is true that they have caused the pain. But recognizing that blaming others really does not serve you and serve your greatest good. It does not help you to transform your life. Because when we keep blaming others, we are stuck in a victim mentality that I am the victim of my circumstances and I am paralyzed to do anything. And in that state, we actually can't do much because we are believing that we are the victim. When we change that and shift that belief to I am the victor of my life, I have the power to change my life, then we start healing. That means that we have started healing. We have let go of any kind of blame and we have taken ownership in our own hand. So it's a huge sign that you are healing. The next sign that you are healing is that you have taken action to change the course of your life. You keep taking action towards your vision, your dreams, your desires. So you do things that lights up your soul. You want to do more things that makes you happy and joyful. So that's a huge thing as well in your healing journey to taking action towards what you really desire. So really recognize that it is a huge step for you to move forward in life. And when we are in despair, when we are self-loathing in pain, we cannot see the path, we cannot see the light, we cannot be aware of where we are going and what we will do. But as we start taking steps, as we start taking action, we start seeing the path. And that's a huge sign that you are healing. The next sign that you are healing is that you are kind to yourself you are for the first time recognizing how difficult you have been with yourself. And this recognition has made you kinder to your own self, your own feelings, your own emotions. You become less self-criticizing. You become more 
empathizing with your own self and you feel like I'm proud of myself for going through what I have gone through and taking ownership of my own life and turning my pain into power and becoming the alchemist of my life. And that's such a beautiful way to see your journey that it is okay to go through challenges and whilst not really losing the sight that you have gone through difficulties, but recognizing how far you have came, recognizing how much you have changed. And that's a beautiful awareness and you should not let that go. And you should be kind to yourself and allow yourself to flourish and blossom to be your best self. And the next sign that you are healing is you allow yourself to cry. You do not judge yourself for crying or blaming yourself or feeling like a failure or feeling like you have a sad life because you are crying. It's okay to cry when you are healing. It's part of the journey. It's part of the process that you have to release these emotions and the best way to release it is without judgment, without attaching any stories, without self-loathing. And then see that as a part of the process, like we laugh, like we express other emotions, we can express crying. And that's absolutely okay to do that. We don't judge any other emotions. We don't judge when we are laughing. It's so normal to laugh and express your excitement but we judge crying a lot we make it look like we are depressed and that's why we are crying which can be true in some cases but realize that you don't have to be depressed to cry you don't have to be sad to cry sometimes certain emotion wants to release and that release happens through crying. And that's absolutely okay to do that. The next sign is that your healing is that you live mindfully and consciously. You are aware how you do things, what you do, everything you do. It requires you to be mindful and you work and have these process and tools that you follow, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, whether just being in nature, whether being fully present in a moment, all of that is part of living mindfully and consciously, being aware of your thoughts. All of that is part of this journey of healing, that becoming aware in the process of your own self and your environment and the people who surround you becoming aware and it's beautiful way to heal and also build this consciousness and this awareness as you grow in this journey and the next sign and it's a powerful one you start grieving for what you never had what do i mean by that you start grieving for that fake hope that you had about love from someone who is not willing to give love. Hope that waiting for someone to change, that they would never change. Grieving about losing someone that you never had. And you were living in this fake hope that you have them that one day they will come back to you one day they will recognize one day they love you so living with this fake hope in your life causes so much pain and when you become aware and when you start this healing journey you recognize and you grieve this fake hope this fake belief of having something 
that you actually never had. And this fake hope served you a while ago, maybe a number of years ago, to cope with your emotions. But now as you are moving in your healing journey, it is no longer serving you. This fake hope is actually destroying. So you grieve the fact that something you always wanted is never been there, never have been there. It was just a thought that kept you moving forward in life. And that thought may have served you a while ago, but it doesn't serve you anymore. And you recognize that person, that hope, that love you were craving from this human being doesn't exist. It never was existing and it never will. And having that awareness and recognition really allow you to grieve the loss. And that's a really powerful way to look at because a lot of pain comes from the difficult, toxic, narcissistic relationships or the patterns that we were exposed to. And that causes a lot of pain. And when we have a heartbreak, when we go through breakup and most people think, oh, let's just get over it and let's just move on and go to the next person or find somebody else. But they never take time to grieve the loss, grieve the loss of the hope that they had with that person, that what it could have been that it never had been. Becoming aware of that, grieving like really grieving like somebody has passed away. And I think it's really important practice to have when you go through a heartbreak, actually grieve about that person as like they no longer exist. And it's important process to go through to heal your heart because even if you do go through breakup and you have this fake hope that one day they come back to you or one day they realize your worth and your value and they will recognize that and they will come back to your life and begging for your love, that's a fake hope. In ideal scenario, it would be amazing if that happens and you can then make that choice at that moment whether you want to go back to that person if that person does come back in your life begging for your love and saying that they have changed then you can make that decision at that time that whether you want them back or not but do not keep hope that they will come back that there is any hope for them to come back and even though the relationship has been broken and you've been stuck in that pattern of this fake hope, you don't have to put yourself through this. Grieve that person like they no longer exist in your life. They have passed on. And that's how you have to grieve. And it's an important process for you to go through. Instead of going to seek another relationship, let's grieve what we have lost just now. Let's grieve and move forward and really recognize that this is over truly and fully. And once you let that go fully, anything that happens afterwards, it's okay. If they come back, great. If they don't come back, great. You can move on and you can live your life fully. And that's absolutely okay. So I really wanted to kind of elaborate this point because it's important, whether it's your family, whether it's a relationship, whether it's marriage or anything, really recognize grieving something that you never had, recognizing and processing that emotion through you is important practice. And the next sign is that you have emotional capacity and mental clarity to be there for someone else, to be there to provide your presence, your mind, your soul, and be there for someone else and help them go through their process and 
be there as a caring, supportive individual. That's another sign of healing because when you are in pain, you do not have capacity to help anybody else because you are completely consumed with your own pain that you cannot be there for anyone. So if your cup is empty, you cannot fill somebody else's cup. It's important that you fill your own cup. So once you start healing, it's a great sign when you are able to be there for people. That tells me that you have healed a lot of things, a lot of pain, a lot of patterns for have that emotional capacity to be present for somebody else. So I hope this video was useful to you. And the last thing I want to mention is that I have a free masterclass which talks about emotional pain and suffering and how to work through and overcome and what are the things that are stopping you from healing and releasing the suffering. If you are interested, I will leave the link below for you to check out this free masterclass. Lastly, like this video if you like this video and subscribe to my channel and this is the next video you should watch and finally, may the light in me reaches the light in you.